Nah, I don't know, man. I'm really, uh, I'm really a little nervous about this one, man. We finna get into it. But you know what they'll say? Can't rain all the time, right? So without further ado, y'all, let's get into it. But first, y'all know how we do. Intro. Yo, it's me, your boy, JJV. Bam! What is good, Great White Gang? It is your boy, Jason JV, saying welcome to another reaction video. Now, look, I have been following the story on this movie, this remake of a classic, classic film. I'm talking about, of course, none other than The Crow. Now, if you've been following your boy for a good minute, it is no surprise. It is no secret that The Crow is absolutely one of my, <coughs> excuse me, one of my all-time, hold up, your boy's gonna go get some <laughs> water, all right, y'all, my bad for the junk cut, your boy needed some water, because his throat was a little dry, and I'm recovering from a cold, so, one moment, please, <sighs> oh, yeah, that definitely hit the spot, <clears throat> now, as I was saying, <clears throat> I have mixed feelings about <clears throat> this remake, um, at first, I was kind of optimistic about it, and I was open to the idea of them um, doing a reboot of this movie. Now, hear me out, hear me out. I know, I know. I'm probably going to get some people in my comment section with their torches and their pitchforks. <clears throat> but here's the thing. I love the original Crow, the, 1990, the 1994 original that stars Brandon Lee. May he rest in peace. Easily my my top five. It's in my top five favorite films of all time, man. <clears throat> and I heard about the, uh, I guess it's the 30th anniversary um, edition that's supposed to come out. The new uh, Blu-ray Ultra HD uh, 30th anniversary is supposed to come out. <clears throat> and uh, yes, your boy is planning on picking up a, a copy. <clears throat> now. When I heard that they were going to redo this, because this thing has been in development hell for the past, what, two, three decades at least. Um, yes, we did get some some sequels that are, are nowhere near as good as the original, although I do like the second movie because I like the idea of, you know, a father and son. I like the father and son um, aspects of that story. You know what I'm saying? Father returning from the dead to avenge the death of his of his son and himself. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, and um, the the Crow Salvation, which is the third one, <clears throat> I wasn't too crazy about that sequel either. Although I did watch that one not too long ago, it kind of grew on me a little bit. Um, I like the idea of it not only being a revenge story that these movies are really um, all they are, but this one. <clears throat> stood out to me because it was also a, a whodunit murder mystery type story as well. So I do, you know, respect it for that aspect of it. And then Wicked Prayer that stars Edward Furlong. No offense to Edward Furlong. You know what I mean? I actually met Edward Furlong. Fun fact. You know what I'm saying? Totally cool dude. And no, no offense to him, but that movie, that sequel. <laughs> yeah, I saw it once and that's it. That's it for me. That sequel is not for me. Again, no offense to Edward Furlong. I love them in Terminator 2. I love them in uh, American History X. I do actually have you know, I have autograph um, pictures of uh, him in both films that he very eagerly signed for me. And we took a picture together and everything. So, yeah, shout out to uh, Eddie Furlong. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and so, and then we got stories that or at least I saw recently on a YouTube video, someone actually went through all these um, canceled Crow movies that were supposedly in the works. Uh, there was a Crow 2037 movie, or I guess it's a Crow movie that takes place somewhere in the future, 2037. Rob Zombie was supposed to direct that one. So you can only imagine being a, it, it was going to be a Rob Zombie film, what kind of movie that was going to be, be like. <clears throat> and then there was another con uh, sequel concept that I actually thought was actually kind of cool. Um, it was called The Crow Lazarus, which was going to star DMX as our protagonist. And Eminem was going to be the villain in that movie. And there was a twist to his character. His character was going to be an anti-Crow character, meaning he was going to be the, 
the uh, Bizarro to DMX's Crow, if you will. You know what I'm saying? To DMX's Superman, if you will. Where DMX would be the good guy Crow that was brought back by, of course, you know, the regular Crows. And then Eminem was going to be brought, his character Stone was going to be brought back to life by an albino Crow. And they were, and you, they were, they were, yeah, they were going to run with the concept of these albino Crows being the evil Crows. You know what I'm saying? That would bring evil souls back to life, which I thought was, was actually a kind of a cool concept. You know what I'm saying? Because up until that point, you never really see see the good guy crow character go up against someone uh, a, a villain if you will an enemy that's just like him or her and i say him or her because there was another idea <clears throat> that james obar who of course wrote the original graphic novel that the 1994 film that starred Brandon lee was based on he <clears throat> started work on a concept of a female crow protagonist you know what i'm saying it was going to be called the crow the bride <clears throat> and I thought, that, man, that would have been really cool if they did something like that. Bring back a fem have a female character be, <clears throat> you know, the first and possibly only female crow character. That would have been dope. So dope, in fact, that <clears throat> me and an up and coming YouTuber who goes by the name of Strange Fantabulous, shout out to Strange Fantabulous, <clears throat> we basically took that idea from James Obar and we kind of flipped it on his head. We kind of did, we went with the whole bride concept, but we made the bride. Sarah, who was the character that was introduced in the first film, <clears throat> this story, uh, this uh, fan fiction, if you will, that we did that was based on James O'Barr's concept, towards took place many years later, where Sarah is a grown, mature woman. She's a young woman in her early twenties, and she was about to get married to the love of her life <clears throat> when a uh, gang of you know a gang of evil heathenistic uh, thugs crashed the party, they crashed the wedding, and basically caused, a, caused, a, caused nothing but chaos and mayhem, and <clears throat> basically they murdered uh, Sarah's would-be husband and her, and she comes back to life to avenge the death of her husband and herself. Um, you can actually see, hear this story uh, on Strange's uh, channel. I'll leave a link for Strange Fantabulous's channel. Highly encourage y'all to go check out that Crow fan fiction. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And um, if the original idea that James O'Barr had for The Crow of the Bride, though, was basically, it's basically Kill Bill. Like, if you've seen Kill Bill, that was basically the idea James O'Barr had more or less for The Crow of the Bride. Only it wouldn't have been as, <clears throat> as funny or as comedic as the Kill Bill movies are to some degree. <clears throat> you know what I mean? But uh, it's basically the same rough idea if you will and so um <clears throat> and then th there was talks of them doing this reboot that was originally get gonna star uh jason momoa there's actually some concept pictures some concept art of jason momoa there's actually some some test footage um some test images too of, J of jason momoa wearing the crow makeup and everything and i thought he looked dope i thought he looked pretty badass but then something happened it didn't work out and uh, they kept recasting. Uh, there was many actors they recasted. So many I can't I can't really name. And then finally, <clears throat> I hear that we're we're getting this reboot that is set to drop this summer, which is a bit too soon if you ask me. But I guess they worked on this film kind of in secret. I understand why. And I think when we see this trailer, I think all y'all will understand why. But uh, it stars Bill Skarsgård, and nothing against Bill Skarsgård. You know what I mean? I think he's a phenomenal actor. I love them. I love him in the in the John Wick movies. I love them as Pennywise, the Dancing Clown, in both its, uh, its, it chapters one and two. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think Bill Skarsgård is is a great actor. You know what I mean? I would say he's definitely a, one of my favorite actors because I, I think he's he's pretty solid. Then I saw a concept art of his version of Eric Draven, and it's got me, it's got me questioning, you know what I mean, the integrity of this film and what they're really going for. Because from what I've read and from what I've seen, supposedly it was going to follow closer to the graphic novel than the original film, the original 1994 film did. So I was totally on board. I said, okay, fine. As long as it's not a complete retread, it's not a complete rehash, remake of the original 1994 movie, okay, 
I, I have no problem with that. If, if, if this version follows closer to James O'Barr's gra graphic novel, n novel, if I can properly speak, okay, cool. I'm, I have no problem with that. I'm totally on board. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Plus, given with today's day and age, as far as what they can do with special effects and things like that, I would love to see what they can do in today's day and age, you know, with a crow movie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, that's just me. But you know what? Let's go ahead and get into this trailer and we'll get more into some doubts that I may have. So without further ado, I don't know if we're going to like the here, here, go, but here, here. <clears throat> What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. You, you two, we're, we're not going to deceive the people. Okay, we just we just don't do that kind of thing around here. All right, we need to tell the truth and let the people see what this thing really looks like. Now, supposedly this is going to be the new Shelley Webster, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> look, I'm going to say it. People may take offense to it. I really don't care because I'm all for sticking closely to the source material. I don't like race swapping for the sake of race swapping. I don't like this force inclusivity in things that is not needed. You know what I'm saying? So, as you can tell, Sarah is, <clears throat> yes, yeah, she is not a white woman. She looks like she could be half white, half black. Now, nothing against this actress personally, okay? I don't know this actress. And who knows? She may she may wow me in her performance because, yes, I will go and see this movie. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to at least see how this thing plays out. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. So that way I can give my honest uh, review and critiques of this film. But um, <clears throat> who knows? She she may be a great Shelley Webster. She may not. I don't know. Like I said, I have to see this movie in order to find out. Anyway, let's get back into it. <clears throat> you feel like my person? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, YouTube, YouTube's still playing games, doing the stutter stepping. I don't understand why, because most of this video is pretty much loaded up and ready to go. <clears throat> you feel like my person? <laughs> you feel like my person. Okay, now here's one of my other issues <clears throat> with this movie. Now look, nothing against Bill Skarsgård as far as his acting abilities. It's this look that they're going with for Eric Draven. Look at this. He looks like one of those rappers that are all tatted up. He's got tats on all over his body. He's got tats on his face. He looks like freaking Post Malone. He looks like, you know, um, Jared Leto's Joker. I know some people made that reference. I'm going to make that reference too because I agree. I agree. He does look like Jared Leto's Joker <clears throat> in the Suicide Squad. It is what it is. Um, another issue that I have with this character that very little people, very little fans have also addressed, his hairstyle. Excuse me one second. Y'all know who this is, right? Huh? Yeah, that is Eric Draven from the 1994 film. You see how he's dressed? All black, right? Long sleeve shirt. He's got the long, you know, leather pants. And then, of course, he has his boots that aren't laced very well. <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there. You see his hair, right? He's got the long hair. Now, to be fair, and some people have made this point, but in the graphic novel, being that it came out, I believe it came out in, in the mid-80s, if I'm not mistaken, the guy, of course, had a mid-80s, you know, kind of, um, I don't know if it's punk rock or or if it's more or less kind of glam rock hairstyle, you know what I'm saying, where it's pretty bushy up on top, and yeah, it is kind of long and everything. Okay. But still. The man's hair is too short. It should be longer. And being that this is a more modern take, it should his hair should at least look like, you know, Brandon Lee's 
you know what I'm saying? As far as like length is concerned. I'm not saying you necessarily have to dye his hair because Bill Skarsgård, I think he has naturally dark hair, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> but yeah, his hair needs to be dark. My man is, is, rock, is rocking a mullet. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of it. So yeah, it is Shelly. I mean, he he's screaming Shelly, and she's hollering Eric back at him. So he's obviously Eric Draven. <laughs> okay, so it says it's supposed to be closer to the graphic novel. Now, Eric Draven in the graphic novel is a mechanic, and all and although we didn't get the mechanic, you know, crow character until City of Angels. You know what I'm saying? Where the dude is, is is a motorcyclist. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you you see him work on his motorcycle. But anyway, I didn't see them work on a car, or you know what I mean. I didn't see them, you know, broke down somewhere in a car or anything like that. You saw them wandering around in these in these streets, and they run into you know the, the group of thugs that are suffocating them. You know what I mean? Which is one of the worst ways you can kill somebody. Um, but that's that's besides the point. Um, yeah, so I don't know. When someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. And sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Okay, I don't like the fact that we got, you know, a man saying Sarah's quote. You should have got a girl to be the Sarah character to say the quote. So, yeah. Yeah. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. Dang, man. That guy got blasted right in the face. Which, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a cool scene. <clears throat> and I see what they're doing. We're showing that my man is now getting the uh, powers of the crow and everything. Not a bad idea. Not not a, not a bad concept. But the look of the man is just ruining it for me, though. And then I don't know this, this scene right here with the with the trains gives me Batman Begin vibes. I'm just saying. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Let's get a good look at those face tats, shall we? So here we got. A name right above the eyebrow. It looks like it says Shelly. So he, I, he got Shelly's name tatted right above the brow. Which, guys, never get your girl's name tatted on you. Because that is a curse tattoo you are putting on you. And tattoos are supposed to be permanent. Then you got an upside down diamond below his left eye. And then you got a question mark over here on the side of his face. Like, what is, is he? Is he the Riddler all of a sudden? Huh? Huh? And then he's got what appears to be a, a star that looks like the kind of star you see people draw all the time on paper. You know what I'm saying? With the... Um, <clears throat> this is not Eric Draven. Eric Draven is not some tattoo face rapper. Even the movie made him a heavy metal dude. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't heavily tatted. As a matter of fact, I don't think the original Eric Draven had any tattoos as far as I know. Bruh. Bruh. Lionsgate, you had one job. You blew it. I with one of them. Way 
So it comes out this summer, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it comes out this summer. I killed you. Yeah, you did. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, what's this? We're, we're, we're already getting revenge on people, but without the crow makeup? Huh? Huh? I don't like that. That's that's not how this this works. He's supposed to put on the makeup before the face paint and everything. He's supposed to put that on before he goes out and seeks revenge. We have a problem. He came for us. Okay. Speaking of the makeup. He's supposed to have two points, two long, lengthy points going down. You barely have anything there. That's what she said. And then he's supposed to have two points going up from the brows. There's barely anything there. That's what she said. You at least got the smile. Well, kind of. His lips should be black, painted straight black. You know what I mean? With the smiling points going off the side of his mouth. You blew it. No, no. This is, that, that is not the crow. That is not Eric Draven. You blew it. First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. And then you got him wearing a trench coat, which, yes, he does wear a trench coat, but with no shirt, so he can show off his ugly, gaudy tattoos. <sighs> Look at what you've become. You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No. I'm not gonna lie, that was actually kind of cool how he shot through himself to kill the guy that was behind him. I do. How many people have you loved? I'll never be alone. And look at you, and you know, the, this version of Eric Draven is so bad that crow did not want to land on his shoulder. <laughs> Bruh, did you see that? That bird was like, yeah, I'm gonna land on your shoulder. Psych, yeah. watch. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do it. So the crow coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I see James O'Barr's name right there. It even says, based on the comic book series and comic strip by James O'Barr. Which, fun fact, I also got to meet James O'Barr, too. He actually signed my Eric Draven Funko Pop and everything. And even colored in half the eyes to make him look angry, which, which is dope. Shout out to James O'Barr. <clears throat> so, yeah. I get the hesitation. I get the anger, the frustrations. And I say those who are against rebooting this, this, this film... And saying that the that this film belongs rightfully to Brandon Lee. I'm sorry. I don't know. I didn't mean to blank on his name. I feel bad. But um, I say those people are justified in saying no. We don't need a reboot. This movie belongs to Brandon Lee. Because, dude, if you're gonna reboot it, at least, at least get the characters look. Right. Get Shelley Webster right. You know what I mean? You're, you're doing that whole made for modern audience nonsense with The Crow. It does not need to be modernized. You can go back and watch the original film and it still holds up to this day. That film ages like fine wine. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. Very simple film. You know what I mean? It's a revenge story. It's a love story. You know what I mean? There's action. You know what I'm saying? 
it's a it's a totally badass character. You know what I'm saying? That is just heavy metal. You know what I mean? Even the the the, the yeah, soundtrack for that film. Oh my god, man! The soundtrack for that film is incredible. This one, you got Eric Draven looking like freaking Takashi Six Nine, Post Malone. You know what I mean? Uh, and any other freaking tattoo face rapper that, that you could think of. And it's just, why? Why? I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to see it. Because again, I have to see how it plays out. In order for me to give my honest thoughts. And so I can give an honest review. And my honest critiques. But yeah. Yeah. Don't forget, guys. Um, like I said, we got some Crow fan fiction over on Strange Fantabulous' channel. Uh, we also did a rewrite of the City of Angels uh, because we found out that the City of Angels, there was some a lot of cut content from the City of Angels by the Weinsteins. They butchered that film, which would have made that film its own thing. It would have given it a lot more heart, more soul. A lot of those things we brought back in our rewrite <clears throat> that you can see over on Strange Fantabulous' channel. Um, it's actually one of our most viewed Crow fan fictions we have <clears throat> on that channel. And so, yeah. And then that one actually um, spawned a, a third and final sequel based in that, in that world, in that universe uh, that I think is a nice, nice fitting ending um, for the, um, the City of Angels story. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Again, um, Strange Fantabulous' channel will be linked in the description down below if you guys want to check out the Crow fan fiction that her and I worked on together. There's also a Scream 7 fan fiction that we did together as well. And then, of course, she has some original stories on there as well if you guys want to check those out. As far as this Crow reboot is concerned, like I said, I will see it. I'm already having mixed feelings on it. Uh, more negative feelings than positive feelings. Because, man, I, I just know already off the top of my head, it's going to make me think about the original. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it's already got me comparing it to the original. Which, like I said, it's one of my most beloved movies of all time. You know what I'm saying? Easily in my top five. Dare I say in my top three even. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, that movie, man, it's such a classic, man. And, like I said, it ages, it ages like fine wine. It holds up to this day. Phenomenal film. If you have not seen the original Crow in 1994, starring Brandon Lee, highly, 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 highly suggest, highly recommend you guys check out that movie, man. It is phenomenal, fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Again, a timeless classic. Just an awesome, wonderful story. And yeah. Yeah. This, As far as this one goes, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to just wait and see how it plays out. But anyway, I'm talking in circles now, and that's because I'm really tired. I got off a shift a little while ago, so I should be in bed already. So, yeah. Let me know how y'all feel about this reboot in the comment section down below. Good, bad, and different. I want to hear all feedback. I want to see all feedback. We can definitely rap about it in the comment section down below. And, uh, yeah. With all that being said, it is your boy, Jason JVs, and y'all take care. Have a blessed one. Don't forget to do all the YouTube thank things to help support the channel if you're feeling the vibes. You know what I'm saying? If you're new here. I'd be very much appreciated. Shout out to everyone that's been supporting the channel. And uh, yeah. till next one, y'all have a blessed one. All right, peace. Jason JV on YouTube. Uh, what's up with you, Jason JV? What up, Jason JV? I'm just sending love, peace, and blessings to you. Jason, you are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, Jamie? My name's Jamie Badger. I'm one half of the next week. We're going to be crazy. 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 We